So in today's video, we are going to be doing a comparison video, kind of like the one that you saw previously, if you've been following the channel, the Zyber 8 versus the Nerd QX++. So kind of comparable in price, kind of comparable in hash rate. Same thing again, we're going to be comparing firstly the overclocking ability, the efficiency, the profitability of Bitcoin mining. I know it's not really appealing for solo miners, but as soon as you get up to higher wattage, I guess, you kind of have to consider how profitable it is or would be to mine with this. I know that this one is going to be actually profitable. I don't know if this one is technically profitable. So the Node QX, because it has the newer chips in it, it's definitely going to be profitable because that's, you know, what everyone is profitable at is the newer generation chips. I don't actually know what chips is contained within the Zyber 8. It looks to be either the Ultra or the Super chips, so either S17 or S19. I can't really decipher it based on the overclocks because the overclocks allow us to go a bit further with this. And in terms of the overclocks for the Nerd QX++, there is more power draw that we can get out of this, but we're kind of going to base them on the standard overclocks that come with both of them. And then maybe, you know, the highest overclock you can hit just by given the options that you have on the menu. So if you wanted to pick one of these up, this you can get 10% off on powermining.io. And this one you can get 5% off on Tiny Chip Hub. I want to state as well, I'm not really pushing these necessarily for you to buy them. I'm going to give you my honest opinion on them. These are not as efficient, but we'll kind of get into the results today and I'll make my opinion on which one you should probably buy. But as I said, if you kind of get 10% off or 5% off and I can allow you guys to do that, then I'm happy that I saved you some money on both of these units, whichever one you decide to buy or even if you don't buy one at all. I'm sure that the codes work as well for just the regular bit axes. So if you want 10% off a bit axe, I believe that power mining also does that as well. But I know a lot of people, and I want to address this now, I'm not really here to sell miners necessarily to a bunch of people. This is just kind of my passion, is looking at these different miners that people come up with and kind of solo Bitcoin mining. It has turned into a channel which is looking at all these machines. And thankfully, we are big enough where we can actually afford to get these miners and do upgrades to them. And that's all because of you guys. So thank you for supporting the channel and subscribing and liking and sharing all the videos. I got a lot of support over the past couple of months for all of these videos. So going off on a tangent, this is our comparison video. Let's get these both hooked up and start mining on them. And then we'll bring it over to the computer and we'll see kind of how they match up against each other. We're going to be mining them to the same pool that we always do, which is EU solo. CK pool currently. We were on solohash.uk, but we've moved over to EU just to spread around hash rate basically. There's not really much rhyme or reason to it. Just thought that we'd try out a new pool. Why not? So yeah, let's get these plugged in and let's start hashing. And then we'll go through our comparison for both of these machines. So here we have both of these miners running. Currently we're on the Node QX++ when we're looking at overclocks because we might as well mention it right now. It's a 575 at 1120, uh, automatic fan control of course. And I don't think there's anything else to mention. We're sitting around 4.2 terahash, but that's slowly climbing up. So we need to give it a little bit more time to climb up to the actual terahash. Currently pulling 73.6 watts. Input voltage is slightly lower, actually 11.3, which is kind of worrying. We would want it a little bit higher than that, just because it is falling under the 11 range. The temperature is 46.4, fan speed 39%, and VR temperature is around 60 degrees. So you can see the overclocks there as well. And then if we move over to the Zyber 8 that we have here, you can see the settings. I think if we're looking at overclock mode, we're on 490 at 1166. So that is the eco mode, but we could run it in normal or performance mode. I don't really know which one to pick in terms of this because 
it seems like the eco mode would be the best comparison between the two of them. And one thing that I like about both of them is that we're obviously allowed to overclock to kind of what we want. So the eco mode is going to be the most efficient mode overall at expected 16.62 joules per terahash. And this one, the efficiency is around 15. So it does obviously change over time. And this is obviously going to change over time in terms of the hash rate. So the figures that we're displaying here is just a snapshot. In the last video, we were comparing the Avalon Nano to the Bitaxe Hex. And the one thing I mentioned is that I don't like the functionality of the Avalon Nano because of the overclocking capabilities. There's not really many that you can do. There's only three options that you can pick from. But with the Zyber 8 and the Nerd QX, you can basically overclock it to your liking. One thing about the Nerd QX, if we're making comparisons as well, is that I think the upgradability of it is slightly better in terms of more heat sinks. There's the hydro version that's coming out as well, so you can get it in a hydro version with the Zyber 8. I don't think anybody but Time Ship Hub are actually developing stuff for it or even working on it in terms of newer heat sinks and stuff like that. So there's probably not going to be any adaptations that you can make to it. So if we're making a comparison, it's only fair to say that the Nerd QX++ would be better in terms of actually adding stuff onto it, especially the Hydro version, which I'm looking very forward to seeing kind of in mass production. And hopefully we'll get a unit to test out as well. Depending on the price of it, it might not be worth it to actually get a hydro version, but it might be worth it just to get the hydro sync and then put that onto it on our actual one that we've got running over there. So with the Zyber 8, it is kind of a custom heat sink that I don't think you can find a CPU cooler mounting to go on it. It's a very weird shape of a heat sink. So that might be different in terms of the capability of actually making adaptations to it. So those are two things that I would uh, think is a fair comparison. But as I said, the best thing about these two miners is you can do your own kind of overclocking. Now, I did mention in the first video where we were looking at the Zyber 8 that there wasn't going to be open source nature of it. Obviously, the XOS is technically open source because you can update it and stuff like that. But I think maybe in the future they might open source it. But Based on this comparison, it doesn't really matter if they do open source it because it is kind of comparable to a Nerd QX. But anyway, let's get into the results right now. So here are the results that we have here. So this is just taken from a snapshot of us mining. As I said, it doesn't really reflect the up and down variations of both miners because they will be spinning at different hash rates and different wattages over time, but it will level out to a certain amount at some point. So the Nerd QX++ over time hash rate is 4.6 with watts of 73.8. As we've already seen the overclocking, we can see the efficiency is around 16 joules per terahash and the price is $450. So on power mining, I believe it's stated at $500, but if you use the code, you can get 10% off. So that's why I put it as that. And then this one's 800, so if you take 5% off of that, so you do 800 times 0 0.95, and that brings the price down to 760. So you have a hash rate on the Zyber 8 of 5.5, and then watts of 83 watts, and slightly better efficiency actually than the Nerd QX++. So you can see there, slightly better by one joule per terahash. The main thing that it comes down to is going to be the efficiency for these kind of higher wattage miners so you can push these up to 100 watts and even past that i know the nerd qx you can push that to 220 watts we've seen people get up to 220 watts with around 10 to 12 tera hash on them but we don't have a power supply to do that and i don't really know we'll ever get a power supply to fully overclock it because i'm scared of basically ruining the board at some point and then the zyber 9 we can obviously take this up to 100 watts. I think the power supply is rated up to 140, so maybe up to 120 watts, and we could see kind of what the max hash rate would be on that as well. But we're yet to do overclocking videos on the Zyber 8 and 
the Bitax Hex. So those will be coming in the future. But currently right now, the last kind of metric that we would look at is price per terahash. So the Avalon Nano in the last video did very well on the price per terahash. These two, not really that comparable, I would say, just because the Zyber 8S, I think the reason that it's so high priced is because it's uh, very unique in terms of the miner and the parts, for example, the heatsink is not one that I can find, you know, a replacement for. But for the Nerd QX++, you can find different versions of the heatsink that it naturally comes with. And those kind of things will eat into price. Power supply, other things, you know, shipping also might include into the price as well. So there's a lot of things that go into price. But in the price per terahash, the Nerd QX++ is around $100 per terahash. And then the Zyber 8 is $137 per terahash. So it's actually quite a bit more by around $40 more per terahash. So for each terahash that you're getting, you're paying $40 more on the Zyber 8S. That's not to say it's a bad miner at all. It's just I think the price could be lowered down if more units were available. Open sourcing it kind of does decrease the price of things because once you open source something, more people will want to buy certain parts for these miners and that's not going to increase the price because there's going to be more competitiveness in the market for these components of the miners. For example, the Bitaxe movement, a lot of those components were probably pretty expensive at the start and now because everyone's buying them, other companies are trying to cut down the prices to actually compete with other companies and get more sales. So you can kind of see how open sourcing that and allowing everyone to build it would cut down the price on these miners. But anyway, that's just the price per terahash. Obviously, efficiency is slightly better. But if we're talking about efficiency, we might as well look at the profitability of both of these miners as well. So for the Nerd QX++, we're at 4.6 at 73.8. This is also at a power cost of 10 cents per kilowatt hour. I know that realistically, nobody has that. But this is just what the calculator comes with. And that gives you a revenue of 23 cents per day and then a profit of $0.05 cents per day. So pretty good in terms of the profitability. I mean, as I said in the previous video, power cost is the main factor in Bitcoin mining at this point. Efficiency is obviously a factor, but if you can get your power cost down to $0.02, cents, $0.03 cents that all the big mining farms have got, they can run older hardware and gain more hash rate. So that's what we're looking at for the new QX++. Then for the Zyber 8, you have 5.5 at 83, and that gives you a revenue of 28 cents and a profit of 8 cents. So comparing it in terms of the profitability, I guess, is not really a, a good comparison because these are designed to be solo miners that hit solo blocks. But overall, I think both of them are pretty competitive in terms of each other. The efficiency is slightly better on the Zyber 8S. I don't know what chips they're actually using within that, because I was under the impression that it was S19 chips, but it might potentially be S21 chips in there. I know they do have a newer version coming out as well, which is the Zyber 8G, which can push up to, I think, 10 terahash at 200 watts. So we'll look out for that as well. I'm wondering what the price of that will be because that's starting to get into kind of a pricey range. If you start up in the terahash, and price per terahash might get a bit wild at around $200 per terahash, when normally people are paying, like on an average, they're probably paying with Bitmain at least $25 to $20 per terahash overall. So as soon as you get into this solo mining game, there's a, a stark difference between the price per terahash of all these solo miners compared to just price per terahash for Bitmain miners. And in the future, I wanna do a video where if we're talking about profitability, how much our actual farm overall would generate in revenue. So we might spin up the farm for a day and kind of generate uh, revenue, stick it onto an actual pool just to see how much it would generate in a day at the highest overclocks, trying to pull as much power as possible because that's going to give us the best revenue. The profitability is probably really bad of the farm right now, especially at UK energy prices. But I'd like to do that video in the future. If we're talking strictly on the comparison video that we're doing now, 
I think the Nerd QX++ is a great device. Obviously, if you want to save money, you would go with the Nerd QX++ just because of the price per terahash, because they're pretty comparable. But the Zyber 8 still does well. I think it could be better if it was open sourced to allow people to actually build their own ones. As I said, I might do a teardown video, but I'm not quite sure if we want to actually tear down this Zyber 8 because I might not actually know how to put it back together. With the Nerd QX++, we could do that very easily, but I don't really want to mess around with taking off the acrylics for the Zyber 8 or even the Bitaxe Hex because they are kind of fiddly when you get down to it and I could mess up something very easily with those miners. So we will be doing overclock videos for the Zyber 8S and the Bitaxe Hex in the future, so stick around for that. If you want to see any other videos, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this video. Uh, make sure you like it and subscribe for more content like this.